need us to have this opportunity to know more about you, to go deeper into your understanding of your word. Father, we thank you that you are a need meter. So every need that is present, oh God, we ask that you meet it with heaven's best, whether it be spiritually, naturally, physically, mentally, or financially. We put it before you. We ask that you meet it and we trust that you will. We put it before you and trust this so that we can take our mind off of that and put our focus and our attention on you so that our hearts and our minds will be open to receive your rhema word on today. Holy Spirit, we thank you that your word will bring for, come forth with power, clarity, and boldness, that it will hit hearts that are open and ready to receive it. I thank you, Lord God, that as I am your vessel this morning, that you think through my mind, that you speak through my lips. As I surrender myself for your glory, I ask that you would get all the glory out of the time that we spend together on today. Father, let me not say anything that's not from your script, but let me say clearly what you have given me to teach to your people on today. Father, we thank you that because we have made this petition, you will reward our faithfulness with more of you. So we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Feel free to take your seat. Thank you. Don't feel rushed if you can't. I know some of you all are looking, trying to do the math. Trying to figure out, like, okay, I see one. But usually there's two. Um, but I'm going to ask if you'll indulge me today. Pastor Russ has another speaking engagement today. So... I'm praying for him, he praying for me, and we're going to do kingdom business this morning. That's all right? That's all right. That's all right. I'm so excited about the word and about this time. And before we jump into the word, I do want to welcome everyone who's worshiping with us for the first time. We are so glad to have you again. So grateful that you would take time to be with us. And I'm gonna also welcome in our television and online campus. Welcome in to you. Can we welcome them in? So excited to have you. We believe that God has something, again, he wants to get into your life through this time. So now is the time to hunker in, okay? Everybody, we're focused, we're alert, and we're ready, right? We're focused, we're alert, and we're ready, right? Okay, all right, y'all got to go with me because we're going. So I'm going to do this so I can get some of this stuff out of my hands. You know that the teaching series that we're in right now, Overflow, amen, we are four weeks in. Wow. This teaching series comes from a book that Pastor Russ and I wrote after teaching um, this teaching series for several years. The Holy Spirit told us to put it in a book because this book will go places that we can't. And it will be available for people to go back to and refer to when it comes time to participate in God's financial plan. So if you don't have this book, you can stop out front and grab one. That way you can read ahead or spend some time in a particular section if you would like to do that. And then, as uh, Elder Lee um, shared, it now has an accompanying workbook. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in this workbook, it's about 25 days where you can actually spend some time and personalize the content that is in the book. It's where you get to write your goals, your aspirations, your prayer requests, your rewarded prayer requests. It gives you scriptures that you can memorize and pray so that this can become even more alive in your life. Amen. So both of these are available out front. Um, so I encourage you to stop immediately following service and grab a copy. The book is online, available at all these sites, um, including Amazon and iBooks. But the work is not uploaded yet, so you got to pick it up from us, okay? Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, let's hold up our Bibles, right? Because we're going to make our confession and go straight into the Word. I wonder if you guys could make the confession without me. If not, I'm going to lead you anyway. Hold up your Bible however you get it. If you got paper pages, if you have a digital copy, however you get the word, we're going to make this confession over it. This is my sword, God's holy word. This is my weapon against the enemy of my soul. I am everything that it says I am. I can do everything that it says I can do. This is my GPS 
to eternal life. And as we say, we encourage you to use your GPS. Amen. Even if you think you know how to get there, use your GPS. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to jump into our teaching today, and we're going to start in the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 13. Okay? And while you're finding that, I'm going to pull up the uh, scriptures for the teaching on this this sermon series that we've been in. You guys could probably already recite this also, but I want to make sure that we touch base and revisit this foundation, these foundational passages. So the first one is John 10 and 10, and I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified Bible. And it reads, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Okay? So we know the enemy's intentions. But here the Lord justified, juxtaposed himself. He says, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows, okay? So he says, I've come that you may have and enjoy life, not endure life, not just get by. He's come that you may have, you have enjoy life and live it to the field to the point of overflowing, to where you have more than enough of everything that you need till it spills over that those that are in your presence. That's what he's come for. So now let's take a look at Psalms 23, and I'm going to start at verse 1. Also a very familiar passage of scripture, but when you read it out of the Amplified Bible, it just jumps off the page. The Lord is my shepherd. To feed, to guide, and shield me, I shall not want. Okay? I'm just going to pause right there real quick because the sister prayed so well about the good shepherd this morning. I want you to realize that he is that. Okay, he is a good shepherd and he does take care of your needs. I know a lot of times we can get a little anxious when deadlines start appearing or things start looking funny, but he is a good shepherd. Okay, he's such a good shepherd that sometimes we forget how good he is because he does it so well. But he is that. So not only does he take care of your needs, but he also wants to leave you in a place where you don't have any wants. Right. So that is the kind of shepherd that we serve. Verse 2, he lets me da lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water, still and quiet waters. You that King James coming up, but I'm not reading that version. Verse 3, he refreshes and restores my soul, which is life. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now notice, as Pastor Russ has been saying this entire time we've been in this teaching, that him leading us down the path of righteousness comes behind the, con the conclusion that he restores our soul. Now we know that our soul is our mind, will, intellect, emotions, and imaginations. And he's come to restore our soul to their original intention, okay? Why do our souls need to be restored? Because living in this life and in this fallen world, you have a whole lot of stuff that comes to make dents, damage, leave dirt and residue. And so he's come to restore our soul, okay? Little parentheses even further. Ladies, BMA Soul Care September starts next Sunday. So hopefully you have text better than 55498. If not, go ahead and do that because we have so many activities and so many plans that we, we put into practice, our souls will be restored with the help of the Lord, okay? Okay, let's take a look at verse four. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Overflows. And that's where we are. We have been in this teaching series for four weeks now, entitled Overflow. And if you know anything about Pastor Russ and I, we believe that God wants us to live that full abundant life, Amen. that in that place of overflow, even in our finances, right? Amen. But the challenge is we can't have faith for anything that we haven't been taught properly. 
And that's a quote from Apostle Mike Freeman, and it is true. We cannot have faith for something we have not been taught properly. It's very challenging to have faith in finances for God to do what we desire and have these big visions that he's placed in the canvas of our imagination if we don't know how to have the faith to pull it into our reality. So that's why we have been spending such an extensive amount of time making sure that we have an understanding of God's financial plan so that we can actually experience the overflow. How many people have been in church for any particular amount of time and you've heard um, slightly about money or at least you've heard to give an offering and you're trying to figure out the why behind it to understand the what should I be expecting? How should I be moving? Why are they asking me to do this? Most of us are so um, sold out to Christ that we give without any understanding. You know, the, they were here when I got here. They said, do this, so I'm going to do this. But we miss so much when we don't have the complete understanding. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, before we go any deeper, we have to make our confession because we're making this confession so that our minds and our spirits and our soul will all be open to receive this new information because we know that some of this information challenges what was once there. So the confession's on the screen. We're going to go read it together. In the name of Jesus, I boldly declare that Jesus is Lord of this earth. The world and all of its fullness belong to God. I claim and receive everything. Jesus' death and resurrection made available to me. I am living in the overflow. I have a surplus of prosperity. I have more than enough. I am blessed beyond measure. My cup is running over. I am furnished in abundance. I receive multiple streams of income. My storehouses are full and overflowing. The Lord is helping me, the Lord is helping me to, guard to guard the door of my mouth. And I will not, I will not speak, against speak against his favor, his favor at, work in my life. at work in my life. I am increasing more and more. Increasing more, and more. The, floodgates the floodgates of heaven are open. And the blessing is pouring out. There is, there is not room enough to contain it all. To contain it all. I, am I am experiencing the overflow. The overflow. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's celebrate the overflow for just a minute. Father, I thank you for pouring out on us. Amen. 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 It's so important that we revisit that because there's so much specific instruction tech tucked away in that confession that you want to compete, you want to repeat it over and over every day so that it can get down in you and you can begin to live it out even the more. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take a look at Amos 9 through 13. I asked you to find that passage a little bit ago and I'm going to read it first out of the New Living Translation. Okay. This time will come, says the Lord. When the grain and grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. Then the terraced vineyards on the hills of Israel will drip with sweet wine. That's a beautiful picture, but you got to hear out of the Amplified. I'm telling you, I love the Amplified. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. When the plowman shall overtake the one who gathers the harvest. And the one who treads the grapes shall overtake him who sows the seed, for the harvest continues until planting time. When the mountains will drip sweet wine and all the hills shall melt, this is everything that was once barren will overflow with streams of blessings. Oh, Father, I thank you. Turn to your neighbor and say, every seed is important. Okay, maybe they didn't hear you. Turn to the other neighbor and say, every seed, every seed is, important. is important. 
Now, I love those passages of Scripture, especially the Amplified Bible, because it made such a pretty picture. Like, if when you get a chance to settle with yourself when you review this lesson, just think about seeing, you know, the hill with the vineyard and how bountiful the grapes are and how they're trying to pull them in, but yet there's a plowman coming right behind them trying to plant seed where they're taking up the harvest from. It's so, such a beautiful picture that it should get you a little bit excited. Well, I know for sure it should be get the sowers excited. Yeah. It may not get everybody excited, but for those that sow, there should be a level of excitement that comes up in your heart. Amen? And so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about the fact that God says in his word, not Pastor Russ or Pastor Mika, but God says in his word that there will be a time when those that are harvesting will be overtaken by those that are planting. And he wants you to have that on the canvas of your imagination so that you can have an expectation of him. Amen? Amen. Your seed is not a financial donation that helps God. Now, this is the interesting part. So you're like, Pastor Mika, how'd you get there? Okay, because we're talking about harvesting. We're talking about planting. We've been talking about being an overflow in your finances. We've been talking about um, tithing and almsgiving and first fruits and seed sowing. Um, we don't want you to think that for any moment that it's a donation or a contribution. Okay, um, you notice those aren't words you've heard often because that is not what they are. It's participation in God's financial plan to bless you. Um, I like the way that um, my husband said, he said, your seed is not a financial donation. It's a financial exchange that obligates God's integrity to produce that, to cause that seed to produce. Okay, let me read it one more time to make sure I say it right. Your seed is not a financial donation. It's a financial exchange that obligates God's integrity to cause that seed to produce. Okay? Wrong information will give you wrong indoctrination, which will give you wrong imaginations. That's a bad picture. Which will rob you of your manifestation, which is a quote by Bishop Isaac Oedipal. Okay, so I'm going to read it again so I can, make, I can make sure I unpack it. Wrong information will give you wrong indoctrination. So what am I saying? When you hear the wrong information um, on repeat, it becomes, you become indoctrinated to use that as your thinking pattern. That's the information that you make your decisions off of. And when you have wrong information and you've been indoctrinated with that information, it will give you the wrong imagination. So that means the pictures on your canvas of my, on the canvas of your imagination will be because those that inf that's based on wrong information. You following me? And so if you have the wrong imagine imagination, it will rob you of your manifestation. So if I'm expecting if I'm expecting less than God's best for myself, I rob myself of the manifestation of God's best. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I'm trying to think of a natural illustration. Oh, do we have the seed packets? That would be a good way I can show you with that. Okay, so we're going to use these quite a bit today, so I'm going to need some interactive volunteers. Who? Thank you. You don't actually have to plant them because I know some of y'all are like, oh, I'm not a farmer, Pastor Mika. I ain't plant no seeds. Yeah. Pastor might want his seeds back. I don't know. Okay. So, we got several seed packets out there. What do we have back there? Zucchini? Uh-huh. Tomatoes? Tomatoes? Carrots? Cucumbers? Cucumbers. You got to love cucumbers. Now, if I take that cucumber and plant it, right, but I get an expectation for the carrots, I'm going to be disappointed, Right? Because I was expecting something other than what I planted, right? And that's what happens when you have wrong information. If you plant a way and that's not, it's designed to yield that the fruit that you're, you're, how can I say this? There are so many people in the body of Christ who have tithed their whole life. They have been faithful tithers. And the, and the, the harvest on your tithe should be the blessing of God and the rebuking of the enemy from devouring your harvest, right? We already learned that, so we know that. So I've been tithing my whole life, but I was expecting 
God to give me a hundredfold return on my tithe. I've been expecting him to give me a hundredfold return on my tithe. And that is not the harvest I should be expecting from my tithe. So I robbed myself of the manifestation of the hundredfold return because I had wrong information when I planted my seed. Can you follow where I'm going with that? So we want to make sure that we get the right expectation of what, how we're participating with God in his financial plan. Okay? So hold the seeds. We're going to use them quite a bit. Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 7. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Okay? You will always harvest what you plant. So point number one is this. Every seed has the ability to reproduce. Every seed has an invisible set of instructions that cause it to produce a particular thing. You can't sow one thing and reap another thing. I just said that. You can't sow one thing and reap another thing. I can't plant corn and get collard greens. I can't plant tomatoes and get potatoes. You can only receive a harvest on what you planted. Okay, and, and it seems so obvious in um, the farming system, but it's the same in the social system. I can't, I can't plant discord and reap peace. I can't, I can't sow nasty and receive friendship. I can't sow um, meanness and receive romance. So if it makes sense in the natural and it makes sense on a social level, then why do we have a challenge sowing the money seed in expectation to receive a money harvest. Going back because we've been indoctrinated wrong with not a complete understanding. So what is that saying? So on the spiritual level, people are trying to pray for money. Oh, that sounds terrible. That sounds so um, contradictory, Pastor Mika. No, but the function of prayer is to get instruction, to get direction on how to receive the money, if that's what you're praying for. So if I have a need, I'm praying and asking God, God, tell me where I need to go and what I need to do to show me how to meet this need. But the problem is for years, people have given to the poor, they have given to the hungry, and God has given them back exactly what they sowed with no increase. Wrong indoctrination. And they're robbed of a manifestation of seeing a bountiful harvest because it that's not the type of giving they participated in. So we have to be conscious and realize that every seed has the invisible instruction to reproduce after its own kind. Whatever it is you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. And some of you are like, well, I don't know what I sowed. Look at the harvest you received. That'll tell you what the root was. I haven't been sowing anything. Well, let's take a look around and see what you got in as harvest. Oh, nothing. Okay, because you sowed a seed of nothing. I'm not doing anything else in this relationship. If we're going to be friends, they're going to have to do it. Well, you probably won't be friends because you didn't sow into it. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. People like to use that when it comes to foolishness. And that is a good application. Because you be messy, messy going to fill your life. <laughs> just gonna say that I'm just saying but when it comes to our finances we have to realize that it's the same principle at play how we engage it is what we're going to receive back from it amen so that's the first point every seed has the ability to reproduce now let's take a look at Mark chapter 4 I'm going to go to verse 26 let you jot that down. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First, the leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally, the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. Point two, every seed will require time before harvest is available. 
okay? Every seed will require time before harvest is available. So many people get frustrated when they sow today and don't reap tomorrow. They get so frustrated because I sowed yesterday and God knew I needed it by Friday and he did not come through for me. But every seed, there is a time before you can harvest it. Every seed. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the seeds. We have some seed packets out there. And on the back of them, it tells you how long it takes from planting to harvesting. So let's take a look there. What is your? 58 to 63 days. So if I plant, can, can you come and be my, my cucumbers right here? See if my math is good. 53 to 60, 63 days. What is that, three months? Okay, so in August, I'm going to plant some cucumbers. So I won't eat cucumbers in August. I won't eat cucumbers in September. I won't eat cucumbers in October. But sometime in November, is my math right? Sometime in November, I should be eating some cucumbers, right? So can you be my cucumber harvest? My cucumber harvest is over here because we like in November, <laughs> right? So in August, I planted cucumbers, but I needed cucumbers for September for my Labor Day cookout. I wanted to make a cucumber salad. So what is that? That's like a week away? I'm going to be a little disappointed, right? Because I don't have my cucumber harvest because there's some time here that I must wait in order for it to bring forth my harvest, okay? Okay, so you got tomatoes, right? Now, how long it take for me to have my tomatoes? You got 70 days. 70 days. Okay, well, come on, come on here. So let's just say I was excited because I knew Labor Day was coming. So come on now. I planted cucumbers and tomatoes for my cucumber and tomato salad. But now 70 days, that's what, three and a half months? So then, two and a half. But I'm going to go down here because it's after this, right? My math night might be good, but I'm figuring, who else got tomatoes? Come be my tomato harvest. So what month are we in? And was my days right? No, it should be October, right? Y'all let me be wrong, ain't say nothing. Because you love me. Thank you so much. Y'all follow the picture. So here we are in October. Okay, there we go. Get me right. But in August, I planted my seeds. Yeah. So I'm sitting here at Labor Day without any tomatoes or any cucumbers because it was, I didn't plant them in time. I ain't got nobody to be mad. I can't be mad with God. I can't be mad with the ground because I didn't plant them in that time. Amen. However, if, I had planted them in, help me with my math, June. If I had planted some seeds in June and this was my harvest and I took some of my harvest and planted them then, then I could be expecting to have a, a harvest in October. That's why we have to make sure we don't stop sowing. Because we never know the time that we're going to need the harvest. But God always does. That's why we can't get mad with God when he asks us for a seed. We can't get mad with God when he asks us for a seed. Because whenever he asks us for a seed, it's because he has a harvest on his mind. And because he knows the end from the beginning, he knew in August that by October you were going to need your harvest. And he doesn't want you to miss your harvest in October by not planting your seed in August. Because he knows there's going to be some time. Okay? Y'all follow me? Thank you so much for participating in my little illustration. So what does that look now? What does that look like for me now? I, I cannot wait until I'm in a place of need to participate in God's financial plan. I cannot wait until the fire is up and the deadline is at, you know, at knocking on my door before I say, you know what, let me go ahead and put an offering on this. No, you have to get into a lifestyle 
where you become like my husband calls it a serial sower. That means that, that I'm, I'm always looking for an opportunity to sow so that, that there won't be a time that I'm not pulling in a harvest from somewhere. Going back to the confession we make. That's why we talked about having multiple streams of income. God will open opportunities so that if my real estate isn't bringing in the money for me, then my clothing line will be bringing in the money. If my clothing line isn't bringing in the money, my catering business will be bringing in the money. If my catering, then the book will be bringing in. And I know that that sounds overwhelming, but that's the place God wants to get you to, to where you have multiple streams of income so that you don't have to have a concern about time. Where he is, he's not bound by it. Where we are is where we, are, we have to experience the time factor, okay? All right, let's go take a look at Luke chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 38, and then we're going to go to Corinthians, okay? Luke 6 and 38 reads, give, and you will receive. You can just go ahead and highlight that. It works, okay? It works. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Okay? So the amount that you give out will determine the amount you get back. However, you can, re you can know that in the first part of this passage, it's going to come back to you in greater measure. But it depends on how much you sow to what the greater of that measure would be. Okay, so let me explain it further. Let's go look at 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Okay? Point 3 says this. Every seed will produce a harvest proportional to the amount sown. That's a lot. Let me read it again. Every seed will produce a harvest proportional to the amount sown. Too often we call ourselves sowing for one thing, but the seed doesn't match the harvest we want to receive. You cannot plant one corn seed and get a whole field of corn. You cannot plant one dollar and expect to get a debt-free car. If I plant a lot, then I'll receive a lot. If I plant a little, I'll receive a little. If I plant nothing, I receive nothing. Now, when we first came up with this point, it, I was telling him about, you remember those little um, styrofoam cups y'all did in elementary school? Did y'all do that science lesson? They give you a little cup and you put your name on it and they give you a skip, scoop of dirt and they give you a seed <laughs> and then you water your seed and you put it in the windowsill and you hope your plant grows. You remember those? Well, when I was reading this, that's what I was thinking. There are some of us who participate in God's financial plan like that. I planted this one, I planted this one $5 right here for Jesus, that one. And I'm so excited because from that seed, from that $5 seed, the Lord is about to bless me with a brand new house. It sounds crazy when you say it like that. But that's how we operate. We want God to do great things. And because he's so faithful with doing big things with discounted little bits, we set our expectation low. And he's like, no, give me your best. Give me, give me according to what you want me to bless. Bring everything you want me to bless and you want me to increase, you bring that to the altar. That's, that's, that's how you can expect. So, Pastor Mika, what are you saying then? Proportional, if not one seed, then what? Well, we're going to read a little bit later that when the, when the farmers planted, they could expect 30, 60, or 100 times more what they planted, right? So, at best, we're looking at 100 times what I gave, 100 fold of what I gave. So, okay, y'all see my math and my day is not that great, but 100 fold $5 is what? A hundred times five dollars is what? Five hundred dollars. I had to check it by three or four people, but I think my math is right. A hundred times five is five hundred dollars. 
right? I don't think in Central Florida you can get an apartment for $500. Nevertheless, a debt-free house. Now, granted, when God put his favor on some things, he can do some amazing things. But if I'm sowing my seed in proportion to what I want to receive... So I'm, I, I see light bulbs coming on because I feel like people were like, oh, I thought that the offering line was for the dollar. My husband says, always give God at least two because one is the only thing that doesn't increase when multiplied. Right? And I get it because I was the same. I remember telling the Lord, I said, Lord, I got, this tenth, I got the tenth part down. I have the tithe. I will never fail on the tithe. But can you just give me a percentage for the offering too so that I can know how much I'm supposed to sow? Like, I will do that. I will hit you with a good 10 and 10 if that's what you want me to do. Like, just tell me so I can be prepared. But then he shared so sweetly in my ear. He said, no, because your seed is determining the harvest that you will receive. And he let it rest on me. Now, there's sometimes he'll tell me, and he will tell me, no, this is one of those times I need you to sow big. And he'll usually send a man or woman of God in. The prophet will come or an opportunity will present itself for those large, you know, trembling and shaking seeds. But then other times I'll be driving down the street. And he's like, yep, I need you to give sister so-and-so $40. Yes, Lord. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but I trust that it's going to be, when I see it in my future, it's going to be at least 30 times what he asked me to give. At least 30 times. Okay, but when we're thinking about it, we have to be thinking proportionally. If, if what I'm sowing for, um, what am I expecting to receive in response to this seed? Okay, and there's somebody in the room like, Pastor Mika, that's a beautiful thing, but five is where I'm at right now. Like, you're talking thousands, and that's beautiful, but I'm at five. So what I'm supposed to do? I want a house. No problem. So reap and sow again. So that means I can't eat my seed. So when I sow my $5 and it comes back to me as $150. Did I say that right? Okay, we good. When it comes back to me as my $150, I don't eat the seed. I sow it again. And then when it multiplies, I sow it again. Sometimes there are, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but sometimes we have a stash that is only for sowing because I don't want that to get mixed up with my spending because you know when you put dollars in your purse, they all look the same. Right. I take my tithe dollars out and put them in an envelope and I take my seed um, money out and I put it to the side. When God says sow, it's already there. Okay. Okay, I don't know how we got there from there, but let's go to Matthew. <laughs> oh, I'm doing good. I already want to clock it. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 13. Good stuff. I'm going to start at verse 3. This is what I was just telling you about. He told many stories in the form of parables such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. These sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun, and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop, this is what you want to highlight, that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Okay, this is point number four. Every seed will require the appropriate soil. Okay, every seed will require the appropriate soil. Before we sow, we must be sure that we're planting in the right environment. All soil is not qualified to receive your seed. I'm going to stop right there. All soil is not qualified to receive your seed. We went through all the different types of soil that the word of God fell on in that parable. Stony soil, shallow soil. Um, pastors use as an illustration today. We have all these awesome vegetable packets. None of us would take them and pour them out on this stage and water them with expectation. We wouldn't. Prayerfully, we wouldn't. We wouldn't take them to the parking lot and plant them in the parking spaces. 
we will be looking for rich nutrient soil to deposit our seeds in. Okay, so that's why we have to be conscious of where we are investing and participating with God in his financial plan. If you, if there are certain conditions, um, is, are you being fed? That's the place to sow. Nutrient soil feeds and nurtures, protects the seed. So I'm looking for places where there is rich um, information, where I'm being fed, where I'm being nourished, um, where there is strength, where there is anointing, where there is power, where there is viability, where there is life, where there is a, a spirit of the Holy Ghost, where you can hear his voice where you can sense his presence. And I say that, and I don't want you to think that because I'm using, um, I call it church and knees, that you won't find these places outside of church, right? Um, because there will be ministries, there will be opportunities, even in business, where he'll say, this is where I want you to partner with your seed. And that's not going to be in church. But that's why you have to be so good at hearing his voice and watching his ways so that you can be conscious of the signs of what health looks like, what growth looks like, what nourishment looks like so that you can't be duped. Okay. Because there will be people that come that God tells you to sow into. And when they ask for the off offering, it's a confirmation in your heart because you were able to identify the good soil when you saw it. Because you've been with the Lord. There will be other places people will come and ask you for money and you'll already have a check in your spirit. No, this is not for me to sow my seed. Right? So you have to be conscious not only of what you're seeing, but what you're sensing in the spirit. Okay? It's so important that we get that. Because there are so many opportunities that we both miss and get taken advantage of because we don't have the discernment to know the difference. Right? There are opportunities we miss because our flesh starts speaking louder than our spirit. And so, like, you know you want to go to dinner at the church. You can't um, sow your um, dinner money, so no, we're not going to participate. That was completely your flesh. You were in the right place at the right time, but you missed the opportunity. And then there's other times when you are so overcome with emotion because praise and worship was so good and the AC was so good that, you know, even though you don't agree with anything that is being said or you don't, you, your spirit is not comfortable everybody else is doing it so you feel the pressure to give and the Holy Spirit didn't put that on you Amen. or you don't see the signs of good soil Amen. so you have to be conscious of where you're investing your seed because we don't want we don't want anything wasted amen, amen? amen. okay I'm gonna say this last one and then we'll, we'll be out I'm kind of proud of myself. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 16. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with the Paphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. All right, this fifth and final point is this. Every seed will demand perpetual sowing for continuous harvest. Okay? will demand perpetual sowing for continuous harvest. We told you that every seed has an invisible set of instructions. And we're going to teach you more next week about the different kinds of seeds or seeding opportunities that you can sow. Um, but we want you to be conscious that you have to consistently and repeatedly provide um, the seed to the ground in order to receive the harvest. So for functional illustration, if I told my husband that I loved him, we've been married for 25 years now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Married me when I was a baby. But um, 25 years ago, I told him I love him. He's the man of my dreams. I'm so excited to be his wife. And I never said it again. I never said it again. Never acted like a gib. Said it at one time. How healthy, if at all, do you think our relationship would be? Will we even have one 25 years later after all that life has presented, right?
So how can I expect to reap a harvest off of a seed I sowed 25 years ago without having to go back and continue to sow more words of kindness, more acts of love and affirmation um, and support. That's, that's how relationships work. And we get that in the natural, right? We get that in the natural. But for some reason, when it comes to kingdom finances, we feel like, but God, I gave one time. Remember that one time, like three or four years ago, when the prophet came, I sold? Each seed will produce a harvest. Each seed will produce a harvest. I'm going to say it one more time. Each seed will produce a harvest. The challenge is we sow a seed and want to continue to reap harvest off of that one seed. Once it produces harvest and it's brought in, you have seed from the harvest, but you don't have that initial seed. And the challenge is most of us eat that. We get so excited when the harvest come in, we spend it before it get here. We be excited. And it doesn't matter big or small. It does, you know, I used to be like, you know, because a lot of um, athletes and when they get their contracts, they buy their mama a house, they buy people a car, and they be like, that was the bomb. But then... That seed produced the harvest, and you ate it, and now it's time to sow, and you don't have no more seed because you ate it all in the harvest, right? So we have to realize that I, I, this is a lifestyle. This is not a one-time thing. We have to get it so concrete within us that we are always looking for the seed and the soil. Always. Looking for the seed and the soil because it is becoming a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of sow, reap, sow again. Sow, reap, sow again. I may be in need right now, so I sow. But I know that when I reap this, I'm going to sow again. Uh, my relationship may be looking a little off, but I'm going to sow friendliness. I'm going to sow love. I'm going to reap, and then I'm going to sow again. If we can get that concept down, I'm going to take it out of finances as we're getting ready to pull this time to close. With my relationship with God, if I sow myself and I reap the harvest of what he's doing in my heart and my soul, I'm staying on the altar. I'm sowing again. Sow, reap, sow again. Amen? And as my husband says, I'm out of time. So will you stand with me? Father, I thank you for that opportunity. We never want to close our time together without uh, making sure that everybody that has spent time with us has a personal relationship with God. Um, all of the principles we talked about in particular today, they will work outside of relationship, but nothing is better than having a relationship with God. Whether you get this money thing straight or not, having a personal relationship with God is what guarantees heaven to you. So if you'll bow your heads with me and close your eyes and um, repeat this with me, if you have a desire to have that personal relationship with God, and we'll just repeat this with me. Say, Father, Father today, today I, repent I repent of every wrong I've done. I ask you to wash me, make me clean, make me brand new. Then I confess you as Lord of my life. I submit to your Lordship and your will for my life. I confess you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you, if you just um, recited that with us and, and you are believing for salvation, you are now saved, set free, and in relationship with God. It don't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what you 